Hello everybody and welcome back. This is Bob with LSC Digital. Uh, even though everything on your screen says I am Marcella. Uh, today we're going to go over how to get contact data and information using the API functionality for Acoustic. So uh, we're in our LSC Salesforce here. But what we're going to have to do first is actually open up uh, our API harness. So right here is our API harness. It is a file that we've opened up here. Uh, you can either get it from the folks at Acoustic or we have it linked down in the description below where you can download this version here. Um, as you could tell, it's a little on the older side with uh, the silver pop language still being used. But it's all basically the same. First thing you want to do is log in. Make sure you're in your correct pod. And you want to use the username for your org. And then you're going to type in the password that you have. And then you're going to click Submit XML Request. And when you see this true, you're going to get this long string of characters. This is your J session ID number. Um, you're going to copy it and paste it up here. It will be different every time. Um, and then you're going to take your XML language, which we will also have a sample of this Word document in that link as well. Um, and what you'll do is you'll make sure that you have your list ID and the event start and end dates with all of the events that you need and all of your column names that you need. Again, this information is on Acoustics support system. So you just have to take a look there. Uh, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna show you how to get your list ID. So we're gonna come back into Acoustic and we're going to choose our databases. And if you hover over a database, a contact list or a query, you will see this ID number pop up. You don't have to click anything, you just hover over it. Uh, best way is probably jot this down on a sticky note and then that number is what gets put right here. So as you can see, the numbers match. So this API XML will reference this LSC Salesforce database. So we're gonna come back over here we're going to take all of this and copy it. You'll see that our event start date is October 15th of this past year, and our end date is 12-3, also of this past year. And paste it right over everything else. It doesn't matter if this says login. All that matters is the data that's here. And then you click your submit XML request. As long as this says true, then you are all set and it is processing. If it says false, you will have a syntax error somewhere in your XML. Um, this will be either just something's misformatted, you may be missing a slash, or one of your tags may be misspelled. You just kind of have to go through and, and hunt down the language. All right, so now that we've submitted our data job, we're going to come over and select data jobs in acoustic. And right here, you're going to see raw recipient data, duration two minutes, complete, today's date and time. You can select the job ID and you can select download for the file and enter your password. We're going to open up the file here. 
All right, and our file is downloaded. So it will always download as a zip file. So you'll just have to open up uh, with any zip client and open up the spreadsheet. All right, now that it is open, you'll see you have all of our data columns here. All right, so here you'll see everything that you get in your standard raw data export. You're gonna get your recipient ID type, a mailing ID, a report ID, a campaign ID, uh, email. In this case, we used a restricted database, so email is a system field that we need. Our event type, the timestamp of the event, uh, body type which for the email, uh, content ID. This will be the name of the link that was clicked the URL that link directed to. If you have any conversion information set up, these three columns will give you all of those details. Uh, and if they were suppressed, this column will give you a suppression reason. This also gives you the mailing name, so the name of the template that was sent out on. Um, and then after all of that, you will get all of the data columns that you specified in the XML. So in this case, we have first name, last name, and you'll notice that I misspelled company, and there is no information in this column. It will export the XML that you used exactly. So this will show you what happens if you misspell anything, you just won't get any data. And you would have to fix it by fixing any of your typos and resubmitting the job process. But in this case, we'll leave it as this is just a sample information. All right, so from here, there's a bunch of different ways to process all of the data that we're looking at. Um, here at LSC, we use pivot tables a lot. So our first step is to take all of this data and we're gonna insert a pivot table. I'm gonna make sure everything is selected. All right, and we're going to filter by our mailing name. So we're just gonna drag that right into filters. We're gonna come down here and we're gonna see every mailing that went on in our date frame which was between October 15th and December 3rd. But realistically, we want to look at all of these newsletters that happened. So we're going to select multiple items, uncheck all, and just check down the line of all of these different newsletters. And we're going to click OK. And I'm going to drag email down to values. Now this will give us a total gross email count of every action that happened on those emails. We're going to double click it and that's going to open up a new sheet. Now in this sheet, we're going to click convert to range and then it'll take a minute and you'll see all of these filters drop away. All right, so now that we've converted it to a normal range, uh, it may take a little while for you depending on how large your file is and how much you're using your current system. So what we want to do is we're going to come to our data tab, remove duplicates, and we're going to unselect everything first. Make sure you have the My Data has headers. So we're going to select email, event type, URL, and mailing name. This is going to remove duplicates for each individual mailing and each individual action. We're going to click OK, and we're going to allow this to process for a moment because it's running through a lot of rows. And here we're going to see we have 22,485 duplicate values found and removed, 371,431 remain. So we're going to click OK. And this is where we're going to insert another pivot table. So the first pivot table was just to give us all unique numbers because anytime you run 
an API for your contact data, it's always going to be gross information. So now we're going to put email in our values. We're going to put our mailing name in our rows. So here our mailing names tell us the date that everything went out. And you'll see there's a few up here that we probably ran as tests. There's only one to six emails happened in there. And we're going to throw our event type underneath that as well. Here, we get all the information that we want to look at. So we're going to see that this email, our newsletter that went out on Wednesday, October 16th, had 1,234 click-throughs, 41 hard bounces, 934 opens, 21 opt-outs, and we sent it to 34,026 people with 522 soft bounces. So these are all unique. So to get contact information for the folks who clicked something, we're gonna double click on here. Now, we are just interested typically in a, any contact who clicks on anything in our emails. To us, that counts as like our own version of a conversion. So it doesn't matter if they click whichever link that they click on. But because these are newsletters, there's a lot of links in them to a lot of different articles. But what we're going to do is we're just going to remove the duplicates just by email. So we found 977 duplicates and 257 unique values remain. So we're going to say OK. And now we'll have this whole column F of emails. They were all click throughs. And we know by going to the very bottom that we had 257 unique email click throughs on this particular email. Now jumping back over to here, you could do the same thing with anything. You could collect all the information on your hard bounces uh, and your soft bounces. This is good for maintaining your database health. Your opt outs as well, um, just in case you want to try to re-engage those contacts through other means, maybe with display advertising. And of course your opens. This is also good if you are assigning values, but you don't have an integration to your sales force. You'll be able to kind of grab these folks. And that's how you get contact information based off of a raw data export using the XML and the API system. Again, links for the API harness and this sample XML that we have will be in the description below. Um, the list ID, however, will just all be X's. You can add in your particular list that you need and make sure that you spell all of your columns correctly. Good luck.